Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank thee that thou dost care for us. Just as thou hast cared for Ruth and Naomi and all these individuals who are mentioned in this book we're studying, we know that you are our Redeemer who left heaven to become flesh so that you can offer yourself up as a sacrifice for us. We ask that that would allow us to understand some things in this book this afternoon. You would be glorified what we say and what we do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so what are some things that we are remembering from the book of Ruth here? What are some, what are some things that we, we can say that we, uh, we know uh, about Ruth? About Ruth or the book? About the book. Okay. The book, yes. Caroline, what's something you remember? A couple things you remember about our study of the book of Ruth here. Just that her husband, her husband died yes, and right. sons died and... Mm -hmm. Right, that's correct. That's correct. That's, that's, what, that's what was happening. And um, her... Her husband, this is Naomi's husband, died, right? Naomi's husband mm -hmm. had died. And uh, also, Ruth's husband died, and Orpha's husband had died. And so we had three women who were widows, uh, all within a close time of each other. They were all, they all became widows. Uh, Ruth is one of them. Ruth, Naomi. Now, where was um, Ruth? Where was her home? Where was she born? Bethlehem. Moab. <laughs> no, for, you know, Naomi, Naomi, she was she was from Bethlehem. Oh, right? I she know one. That's, that's good, and, though. And that's that's where that's where Ruth and Naomi had had traveled. That's, where they, that's to where they traveled. They, they traveled there to uh, Bethlehem, Judah, because that's where uh, Naomi was originally from. Was that was the area of the country, and that's on the um, the other side of the of the Dead Sea. Now, remember, uh, there was a famine in the land. This is kind of by way of review. There was a famine in the land, and then, then Ruth and, uh, rather, not Ruth, Naomi and her husband, Elimelech, two sons, they left Bethlehem, Judah, they left Bethlehem, the house of bread, and, because there was a famine. And they were left, went and they went to Moab, and they sojourned there in Moab. And it, during this time they were sojourning there, uh, the two sons married, two, two, two local ladies from, from Moab, and then Naomi's husband dies, and then the scripture tells us that her two sons die, the ones that are married to Orpha and Ruth. And Ruth is, uh, Ruth returned with uh, Naomi to Bethlehem, but Orpha stayed in Moab. And uh, last week we were talking about refreshing the permanent, the uh, uh, Ruth was out there gleaning in the field, and it was um, providentially she was gleaning on the field that belonged to what was the man's name? The field belonged to to whom the field belonged? Do you remember uh, him? Boaz. Boaz. It was Boaz. Boaz's field, and Boaz is is near kin, near kin to Elimelech, um, but not the closest kin. We'll see. And uh, last time, we think we stopped right around verse 14. Uh, so well, let's, let's read 14, uh, 15, and 16. We'll kind of review 14 slightly, and then we'll go on to the new verses. Uh, Tammy, start with verse 14, please. And Boaz said unto her, At mealtime come thou hither, and eat of the bread, and dip thy morsel in the vinegar. And she sat beside the reapers, and he reached her parched corn, and she did eat, and was sufficed, and left. And when she was rise, risen up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and reproach her not. And let fall some of the handfuls of purpose for her, and leave them, that she may glean them, and rebuke her not. All right, so in, in uh, verse 14 we have here Boaz, 
Um, Boaz is eating a meal, a meal with her, and there's what what is what's involved in the meal? What's what's on the table? What is bread. Some, bread. That's right. Bread is on the table. What are some other things that are on the table? Corn. Corn. That's right. Parched corn. Okay. Uh, vinegar. 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 And so. Put the bread in the vinegar. Yeah, the bread in the vinegar. You dip it, and that's what they were doing. Mm -hmm. uh, they were dipping the bread into the vinegar. Um, and now, who, to whom was she sitting beside? Where was uh, Ruth sitting at the meal at the meal time? Beside the reapers. She was sitting beside the reapers. That's correct. She was sitting beside. Um, those would be the young men, wouldn't yes, they? Yes, that's right. They'd be the young men, that's correct. Um, now, what does the word, uh, what does the word suffice mean, Caroline? Do you know what the word suffice means? Suffice? In verse uh, 15. Do you have that one on your word list, maybe? Wait a minute. I don't even see the word. <laughs> no, the end of verse 14. Oh, the... Oh, okay. No, in verse 14. Did you say I'm 15? sorry, I'm sorry. I must have said the wrong verse. Verse 14. Oh, verse 14, here? yes. I, yeah, I, said, I, I did, I did oh. say the wrong verse. Verse 14, thank you. I was looking for yeah. it. I didn't yeah, that's what I was like. Verse 14. Verse 14. That's right. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the place you can write it? No, it's not in here. Okay, suffice has the idea. You got a definition for suffice, uh, Tammy? I would say satisfied. That's good. Satisfied. She was satisfied. She was full. And I think this, this uh, the vinegar and the, the bread is an interesting um, meal that they were having. Yeah, it is. It's a very interesting meal that they were having. I think you know, if, we, if, we, if, we had, if we would look at it deeper, uh, did a study of, of the cultural diets of the day during, of, during Israel's meals, uh, there, there's, there may be some significance to it. We, we, we're not studying the meals of Israel, although that would be an interesting study. We could, if someone did, we would find a lot of interesting things. Well, didn't at, at the um, Last Supper, didn't they dip their, their bread into something? Was it vinegar? It was a sop. Yeah, there was the, something they were dipping, their, 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 their dipping into the dish. Yes. They were dipping their bread into yes, the dish. Yes, I think so. I wonder been, if it was vinegar. Could have been. Mm -hmm. It could have been vinegar. And it, it has, there could have been some significance to uh, what they were eating. You know, I'm not sure. We'd have to look at it closer. Study the meals of, of, of the Bible. You have a book. There's a book out there called All the, all the Men of the Bible. You have. There's a book out there called You Know All the Young. Um, oh, you can write it. All the meals of the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Right. What was it last yes. night on the on the History Channel? There was the Bible. Okay. Really? Yeah. For two nights, I think it was last night and tonight, mm. or Saturday and Sunday, or something like that. But I know it was the Bible mm. on the History Channel. Mm. Hmm, that's interesting. It is interesting. So, uh, they're eating this food. And now, what happens in verse 15? Um, now, in verse, um, verse 15, who was, uh, let me ask you this question, who was permitted to glean among the sheaves? Boaz. Uh, Boaz granted permission. Boaz gave the idea. Boaz told the young men, allow her to glean among the sheaves. So, who, who, would, the, who would be glean among the sheaves? Ruth. Ruth. Ruth is uh, gleaning uh, among uh, the sheaves. Now, Ruth told the I'm pardon me, Ruth Boaz told uh, the young man to uh, permit this, to allow this, to allow her to glean among the sheaves. Now, when you're gleaning among the sheaves, you're going to get more corn or barley than if you're just gleaning out in the field. Because the or sheaves, grain. Or grain, yes, that's whatever, whatever, whatever type of corn, whatever type of item that they're mm -hmm. harvesting, you're going to be able to get more of it if you're gleaning them among the sheaves. If you're close by sheaves... That's a stock, right? A stock, yes, that's right. It's a stock. And so you're going to, going to get more 
than if you were just going out there with the field. We could still we still get some in the field, um, but they they had to, they had to work um, in order to, to get some. Now later in the later on in the book, we're going to find out that uh, Ruth is given a lot of a lot of grain, a lot of corn, a lot of barley, uh, but right now she's permitted to glean uh, among uh, glean among the sheep. And this is what she told the young man, Tammy. I'm sorry, can I interject this thought? It's not, it's not related to exactly to this passage, but I was just thinking, and I was wondering, you know, they, they didn't have anything, so she had to go and glean. Mm -hmm. But I had forgotten and that probably they, they had a house there, and they just, she just came back to the house mm -hmm. that had been left. Right. It'd be as though you moved for several years and yeah. then came back. To your house, so mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't. I mean, they didn't have anything, but yet they did have something, you know. So yes, mm -hmm. I, it just, um, it, like I said, it's not exactly on the subject, but um, you know, it's, they didn't have food. Right. Um, they didn't have what they needed. They probably didn't. They may have still had all the the furnishings, whatever mm -hmm. they yes. whatever they would have had in that day mm -hmm. in their house, but they didn't. They didn't have any food, you know. Right. So. That's right. Uh, and so they, 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 she brought the food back to the house with her, the, 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 the uh, corn that she gleaned, the barley that she gleaned. Mm -hmm. And um, now... She was supposed to glean among the sheaves. So, yes. so in other words, she was picking them right off the, off the stock? Is that the idea? Or uh, I think she was... I, I think it means... You know, the base of the stock. That's what I think it would mean. I mean, it may, maybe it does mean the stock itself, but I always thought, I always thought, I mean, they, they would, they perhaps, I guess they would harvest, they would cut, they would cut down, when in the process of harvesting, they would, they would, they would take all the stalks down and bundle the stalks, you know, put, perhaps put them on, put them, some, put them, stack them up in the ground, put them on a wagon, take them to the, to the, to the barn, and they would, they would have stalks that would be, so they'd be part of the process by which they would harvest it. And today we have a com the farmers of combines would go through the field and it's pretty much a, a seamless. So a lot of the things would have dropped right there. Right, probably. right, that's true. Uh, the idea is so when you when you if you pick them, I think when you pick up a stalk, a, a bundle of, a bundle of sh stalks, which would be sheaves, I would I would think, uh, I'm, there may be a technical technical distinction. Then you move them, you know, you, you put them down here. Then there's going to be a surplus of of barley that falls. Um, that's what I would think. Now, what you were, what you initially said that could, that that might be a possibility, but it's it's something that perhaps was not necessarily done all the time, was not permitted all the time in, in, in the process of the, the principle that they had to let the poor people come and, yeah. and glean in the field. It was a special exception. I I just I wouldn't know how to how to pick anything other than corn. That's right. the only thing that I'm mm -hmm. familiar with. Right. So it's kind of hard to picture in my mind, I guess. I guess we have to get, a, get an idea of what barley looks like. I mean, corn is pretty, um, you have all, all, you have the husk and all the kernels of corn are on the husk. I think right. with, with barley, with grain, you know, with those type of, with, with wheat, it's different because you have the, it almost looks like your, your flour or I'm not sure what the, what they would call it, but the different parts of the, of the, of the, we have the wheat germ. It's like a shaft yeah. that kind of comes shaft. up. Mm -hmm. And so that, that is the part that's harvested? Uh, harvested, and then the, the stock part is the chaff, or what? What would the, the chaff? The chaff, be? the chaff is the is the, is the part that um, you know, when you have a dandelion. Let's for instance, we have dandelions, right? <laughs> and remember, dandelions. Have you ever taken a dandelion, Caroline? <laughs> yeah, this? I've had it, but I've never picked them. <laughs> uh, as far as you hold it in your hand and you. <laughs> Maybe I, when you're a child. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I haven't done this recently, but. But the idea of a dandelion, you know, how you blow it, and, I mean, after it's... Yeah, after my grandchildren used to love to do that. <laughs> and think about it as the stuff you blow, that's the chaff, and then there's just some seeds that remain, and the seeds will fall. And so the idea of, uh, and of course, they grow the seeds of barley, the seeds of grain, they're, they're larger, but the but the chaff is, is what, I mean, the chaff could be... Is that that loose stuff that you see... Sometimes in a picture, 
Yes, the that's right. Top. Yeah, that's the loose stuff. That's See, the chaff. That's the chaff. When you were, uh, should, I should, mm -hmm. when you have, um, when you when you have a farmer that has a combine machine, they have, they have an implement, a special, a special, um, implement. It's just a, it's a, it's like a tool. It's, it's an insert device, a device you insert into the bottom or into, into the bottom of the combine machine, and the, 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 the combine goes through the field, and this is modern day farming, and it, and it takes it, and it, the implement, it can, it's, it's a, such a, it's machined to such a point that it only lets pass through this, the thing that's the size of what the harvesting, or it's a husk, whether it's a, whether it's a, whether it's the grain, whether it's the wheat, whatever they're harvesting. And so in, in one, you have the good stuff, the good stuff goes back in the, in the wagon, the, the chaff is blown off the site. And so it, in a certain sense, you know, the stalk would be part of the chaff, but it's not... But it's not technically... It's not, it would okay. be, in, in modern farming, maybe we call it chaff, but in, in, in farming by hand, you know, you would, that's easily, you can, you can get rid of, that's clearly not, not the wheat, but you have, the wheat, you have, still have that dandelion I'm using the dandelion, that's not the right word to use, but the dandelion stuff sticking to it, the, the stuff that has to blow off to get to let the, let the grain drop. And so, you know, you have to, you, you, in the winnowing process, that, you know, you, you would beat it with something or you would, you would shake up and down and you have, in the winnowing floors, you have the, the wheat or the barley, whatever it is, the, 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 the real meat of the, of the harvest, that's heavier and so that, that will fall down. To, to the to the to a lower story or to a lower lower contain, lower compartment, and the other stuff is going is going to actually would blow away or could be could be swept away hmm. in the process. And so when she's leaning among the sheaves, it's either uh, I, I I suppose I suppose the, what you initially said as far as picking it right off the sheaves that would be a strong possibility. I was thinking it would be, be it would be more of a uh, moving the stalks after the stalks are moved, either the stalks are gathered together, but they have not been completely harvested. They have not been, but there's there's, there's a, surp a surplus amount when you st when you take a when you take and you stack them someplace, then you're going to have some some, some barley adults. falling. Yes, and so that's what I'm thinking. If she's if the gleaning is picking up stuff that's falling, when they, when you glean among the sheaves, it's, it doesn't say glean among the stalks. It's just glean among the sheaves. So when you glean among the sheaves, you're going to have a little bit more because the, 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 the stalks have been disrupted and have been bundled together in the sheaves. I think that's what a sheaf is. And if anyone's listening today please, and you know what a sheaf is, please uh, send us an email at questions at bftbc.org or give us a call at 856-816-7839. That's 856-816-7839 or again the email address is questions at bftbc.org. So we have we have the, the, this gleaning process that's that's taking place here, and Ruth is Ruth is permitted to glean among the sheaves. Now we have the young being the young man being charged that you know don't reproach her, not to reproach her when she gleans among the sheaves. This is something that was an exception for Ruth. Or scold her, right? Or, or, yeah, that's right. Or scold her. That's better. That's better. That's that's what we would say. Don't scold her, don't reproach her. Right. That's correct. Um, now, in verse 16, uh, who was told to let fall some handfuls of purpose? In verse 16. Remember, Caroline, can you see that in verse 16? Yeah, I see it, but I... All I see is like the word her and... Okay, so it doesn't. We have to figure out who the her is. Right. <laughs> that's for her, so that's who it's for. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. who's. Yes. So it's it's for Ruth, but it's not who's doing it. You have to go back to the previous yes. verse. Yes. Go back. Go back to the previous verse to get the the her is her in there. Who's the her? Um, <laughs> and sadly, all it says is. She. <laughs> Do you see okay. that? <laughs> so, now, we know her is a she. But oh, then, okay. And then who is a she? <laughs> who, who is a she? Keep going back until you <laughs> find her name. <laughs> oh, I told you on this day is 
<laughs> not my day today. She's not oh, having the best day. <laughs> now, let me wind me up. Let me, I think it, it was Ruth. Yes. Ruth is, Ruth is the she, Ruth is the her. We uh, it hasn't said Ruth for quite a while no, here. No, it hasn't. So we're um, running on verse 8. It says, to, unto Ruth. I think that was the last time she was mentioned. Now let me ask you this question. In verse 16, I'll ask you this one to Tammy. Who, who, um, rebuked, who rebuked Ruth for gleaning in the location she was at? Verse 16. Well, it doesn't necessarily say that anyone did. Right, that's right. Nobody, nobody rebuked her. They that's weren't right. supposed to. They were, they were given a direct. And the who is the young men. Yes, but. that's right. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. Now let's, let's read verses, see that, Caroline? Yeah. verses <laughs> okay. 17, uh, 18, and 19. Go with Tammy, start with 17. So she gleaned in the field until even, and beat out that she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city, and her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned, and she brought forth and gave to her that she had reserved after she was su 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 suffocated. Suffice. Suffice. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm somebody give me a good day today. Let me go back to bed. Get up again. Oh. <laughs> And her mother That's right. You can, you can start over right now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Something. Oh, my body's all messed up today. <laughs> Verse 19. And her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou leaned today? And where roddest thou? Blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee. And she showed her mother-in-law with whom she had wrought, and said, The man... The man's name with whom I wrought today is Boaz. Okay, so going back to um, verse, uh, verse 17. Uh, she gleaned uh, in the field until even. Now, what is, uh, what is even? Would that be at sunset? Yeah, that's, that's evening until sunset. That's correct. And if you, if you remember, she was there if at the morning, in the morning time. So she was there probably from you know, dawn, pre-dawn hours, sometime when it was dawn. Uh, just, just slightly before sunrise, to even to after sunset. So she was there a long time, a long time. Um, you know, depending on what time, depending on it's a you know over twelve hours. She was uh, she was there easily over twelve hours during this time of year, and okay. she was gleaning into the field until evening time. Now. Going, look, going back to verse 7, uh, chapter 2, verse 7. When did she begin? We already said this, but let's, let's see where it says it. In verse 7. Uh, I think it says in verse 7. Maybe it doesn't. The morning? Morning, the that's morning? correct. That's right, the morning. The morning time. And, and um, what did she do with, uh, with uh, that which she gleaned? What did she do with it? She beat it out. She beat it out. That's right. She beat it out. And what's the I purpose guess, of doing she, that? She was making flour. I. Or I don't. I think I think <laughs> what it means. No, <laughs> no, it's, no it's, though, she may have been making flour, but though I was this is what I thought it meant. <laughs> okay. This is what I think it means. Um, I think she she eventually did make flour out of it, but I think what it means beat it out, meaning she was she was separating the good part of the stock from the the part of the stuff that wasn't worth much of anything. Oh, okay. And so she was she was kind of a process that was she she was separating the the, 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 the wheat and the chaff, you know. Right, or the barley and the chaff. Or the barley and the chaff, yes, right. The barley and the chaff. She was separating it and so she was getting a, a heart the meat of the of the of the plant and then the other stuff, that's what I think it means she beat it out. Okay. She put it on the ground that makes sense. And and had a had a some type of instrument Something like like a broom, perhaps, or something perhaps maybe more um, not quite as flexible, not quite as um, not a stone. Could be a stone. Could be a stone. Um, or a paddle, like a flat paddle, or something. A flat paddle that could yeah. be uh, uh, instruments of, uh, of of gleaning, uh, or, or rather of, of, of um, reaping, reaping, harvesting. I mean, we have we have uh, talking about uh, there there is this is this is a 
uh, important business during this time. It's, it's important business even during our time. But you know, we have all sorts of instruments of talking about threshing floors. There's several, several examples of threshing floors uh, in, in the Bible. And when, you, when we thresh, when we thresh uh, barley or any type of grain, it has to be, there's a process by which you have to separate. Now, the, the threshing floor that was, that was set up in one way, but when Ruth was doing it manually, Ruth was doing it manually, she has to do the, the process of a different, she's doing the process in a more primitive way than in what, the, what, the, what Boaz and the young men would do. Her, her, her process was different. The end result is the same. You want to separate if this this pen, we'll say, were were um, bar it's not so it's bar 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 <laughs> But you got to get this cap off of here. So this so is have to be imaginative. This, this, this is the, <laughs> yes, this, this, this is the barley, and this is the chaff. You know, you have to you have to do what you can to to manipulate that cap off of there to get get the get the barley and the chaff, the, the chaff separated from the wheat. And so when she beat, she 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 took an instrument, you know, a, a stick or rod. Maybe stone, or maybe she, maybe she took, maybe she, she hit it against the stone. You know, she took the whole stalk and she hit it against the stone until it, it got the the meat of the plant out, the barley was removed, was separated, and so that's what it means to I think the the beat. She uh, she beat it like a uh, now. I'd like to see that. <laughs> I mean, like a broom handle, maybe. I, I just, like they do take a broom handle or something and beat rugs with when they don't have anything to be in the sun. Right, okay. right. Well, we'll have to, we can maybe we can make a figure out how to see it. I'm going to see it. <laughs> but um, uh, we'll have to look it up. Okay. Oh, are you going to look it up right now? Uh, I don't know if I can look it up. I'm not sure if I'm hooked up or not. Um, maybe, I mean, maybe we should look it up later. And yes. we can we can look at it next time. Yes, we'll look at it next time. So we'll take a note of that. <laughs> And we'll look at it next time. Write yourself a note. <laughs> and, um, but the but the idea of what we'll do, we'll have to look at. There's a couple things we want to look at next time, as far as this process of how you glean, how you beat out something. How some of some didn't have wasn't a farmer, and they just they just had a small amount of a barley, and they didn't have a threshing floor. How would they how would they get the their barley off the stock? That's what we want to know. Because mm -hmm. we know how to do corn. Corn is corn's easy. Corn is the easy okay. thing, at least to get corn husk off the stock. I mean, there's a process to get the, the kernels off the stock, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about we're separating the, the, the stock oh, husk from the stock. Even that's not too difficult. No, it's not. By comparison. No, not too difficult. <laughs> by comparison, no. No, it's not, it's not too difficult. So this is what we're, uh, we're, 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 what we're discussing at the moment. Uh, so um, she beat out that which she gleaned, and... Um, what uh, what is Eph what is an ephah? Verse seventeen mentions an ephah. Well, she was able to get a close to ephah. I have a note here. It says um, that it's from one third bushel to one plus bushel. Okay, so no, so this is a unit of dry measurement, right? Right. So that's a, quite a variation. Yes, it is. It is quite a bushel variation. basket's about like mm -hmm. like this, right? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. but then a third of it. I mean, right. a third of it's considerably less. So. This would be. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, to think that she worked all day, mm -hmm. and if she only got a third of a bushel, right. mm -hmm. then she really didn't get a lot for all the work she did. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. But if it, if it's barley or wheat or something, maybe it, you know, it's a lot more, perhaps a little more labor intensive because mm -hmm. it's, it's smaller. Yeah, yeah. it could be. You know. It could be. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, to, to, uh, to where did Ruth take the barley in verse 18? Where did she take that barley? Into the city. She took it into the city. Now, who in the city saw what Ruth had gleaned? Naomi. Naomi saw that. Naomi saw that. And uh, we already talked about how suffice being satisfied. Did we not? Mm -hmm. And... Um, if you're going to go on, I have a question. First question. What is the she brought forth? I think she brought forth means she brought forth the barley. She brought forth the ephod of barley that she gleaned. That's what I think it means. Oh, referring to Ruth. Yes, that's right. 
Mm -hmm. okay. That's what I, that's what I, how I understand it. Oh yeah, her mother-in-law saw yes. what she had gleaned yes. and she brought forth. Okay. Yeah. Well, how could she see what she gleaned before she had brought it forth? I guess she saw it from a distance, maybe. I don't know. Um. And she brought forth. I mean, brought forth. Maybe it was close. <coughs> you know, like right, right up to right. her or something. Yeah, that, that could be. That could be the idea. She saw it from a distance, and then. Um, it was brought forth. Oh, this is this our other student. Somebody's knocking on. No, door. I don't think. I don't think so. But um, so I don't think it's a student. Okay. Here, so I'm guessing. Okay, all right, I'm good. All right, so um, so in verse 19, I guess it can't be our student. Verse uh, 19. And um, her mother-in-law said unto her, Where hast thou gleaned today? And what's the answer? What's the answer to that question? Uh, where hast thou gleaned today? And where rungest thou blessed be he that did take knowledge of thee? That's the answer? Um... Or am I confused again? <laughs> no, no, you, you think you're, you're in the right, right, right um, verse. Um, she, she gleaned, the place where she gleaned was in, um, Naomi's asking this question, right? Right. And, um, and rottest, what, is, what does the word rottest mean? The in wrong place, 19. the wrong place? Rottest means um, worked. Rottest means worked. So... I was, I was trying not to give too much away. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> Good. Do you think it was legitimate? Yeah. Or? I think it was, but okay. they didn't look very old. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. What did I miss? Uh, we're just talking about... Um, 19. Verse 19. <laughs> okay. Um, and we asked, the, uh, we, asked, we asked the question uh, about the question. We said, who asked the question... Where hast thou gleaned today? Who asked that question? Naomi. Naomi asked that question. And we're just about ready to talk about what the word uh, rottest meant. Oh, good. Okay. What is that does on the your word, list? I don't think. What does the word rottest mean? Who was that? Edison? The one God rot? No, it was Alexander Graham Bell. Mm -hmm. No, it it's not in there. What well, has God wrought? Remember that from yeah. um, Alexander Graham Bell, I think, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Or was it Edison? I thought it was Alexander Graham Bell. Who had the telegraph? Was it Bell? It was Edison. I think it was Bell. I may be getting it all mixed up, though. So. Well, the, why don't you tell how to help us out here? But rot. What does rot, rot mean? What is he? Uh, rot is brought about, created. Yeah, that's right. Made. Right. See, we have, we have, you've heard of, uh, Caroline, have you heard of wrought iron fences? Uh-huh. There are fences that have to be manip manipulated and worked. Each, each one of those rods in the fence has to be worked and be twisted and formed. Heated, I guess. Heated so. and then twisted by, by somebody. It has to be worked. It has to be worked out so that it's, it could be, have it just the same, it has a particular design to it. And see, when... Rodis, the question was asked, where did you, where, 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 where rottest thou? Uh, Naomi was wondering, where did you work today? Where did you get out, where did you get this ephah of barley today? That was the, the question. Um, now let me... I guess the answer is the same, huh? Yes, that's right. And so, and so as long as we're asking this question, kind of review again, but where did Ruth rot? With whom did Ruth rot? Whose field? Verse 19. Is it in verse 19? Yeah. Um, at the end of verse 19, uh, Ruth gives the answer. Okay. Uh, and Boaz. That's right. Boaz. That's right. She wrought in the field of Boaz. Now, let's continue on with verse 20. 10, 20, and Caroline 21, number 22. And Naomi said to her daughter-in-law, Blessed be he of the Lord, who hath not left off his kindness to the living and to the dead. And Naomi said unto her, 
the man is near of kin unto us, one of our next kinsmen. And Ruth the Moabitess said, He said unto me also, Thou shalt keep fast by my young men until they have ended all my harvest. And Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter, that thou goest out with his maidens, that they meet thee not in any other field. So she kept fast by the maidens of Boaz to glean until the end of barley harvest and of wheat harvest, hmm. and dwelt with her mother-in-law. Now, going back to verse verse 20, um, who um, who was a near kin to, uh, to to both uh, Naomi and Ruth? Who was near kin? Boaz. Boaz. Boaz was a near kin. And in the next verse, the word the word fast is used. Now, fast uh, can mean different things, but in this in this verse, Tammy, what do you think? Uh, what what does fast mean? You wrote this verse, verse um, twenty one. Close. Close means close. So she was to keep keep close. Now, to whom was she to keep close, Caroline? Young men. Young men. And um, they were the reapers. They right? were the reapers. They could keep close to the reapers. That's right. Keep close to the reapers. Uh, now, the verse, uh, the same verse here. What was the name of Naomi's daughter-in-law? Remember. Uh, According to verse 22 and other verses here, uh, Caroline, the name we're looking for the name of Naomi's daughter-in-law. I guess we have. I guess there's two, two answers, but um, two answers. The name of uh, Ruth's daughter-in-law. Look in verse 22 of this of uh, this passage. Uh, maidens. Her daughter-in-law. Look at the beginning. You got me confused again. Read the beginning of verse 22. It says, And Naomi, Naomi said unto Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It is good, my daughter. All right, so let me ask the, ask the question again. What was the name of Naomi's daughter-in-law? Ruth? Ruth. That's right. Oh. Ruth. <laughs> she's Ruth. just calling her her daughter. Yes. I mean, oh. rather than saying daughter-in-law, she's saying right. she's mm -hmm. her daughter. I'm waking up. <laughs> <laughs> who who is to keep uh, close to uh, Boaz's maidens? Tammy. Ruth. Ruth. That's right. Ruth was to uh, Ruth was to keep close, and uh, Ruth gleaned until the end of the which of the two harvests. Both of them. Which two harvests? <laughs> what were the name? The name of the name of two harvests she she gleaned until the barley. The barley and the, which other one? You see the other one, Carolyn? Wheat. The wheat. And um, and with whom did Ruth dwell? Her mother-in-law. Her mother-in-law, Naomi. That's right. And so we have here a uh, an interesting situation. It's an interesting scenario here with with all that's going on. Uh, but we have again to review kind of what was what was happening here. We see, we learn that Ruth is in the field. She's gleaning. She 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 gets makes some type of friendship with with Boaz. Could uh, go back to could be an informal friendship, but still there's a friendship uh, that was developed. And she's she's allowed to eat at the dinner, to eat, eat eat meals with the, the people, the reapers, and with the maidens. And she's permitted to even glean among the sheaves, and not be rebuked for doing so. And then she brings her her. Ifa of Barley, back in the town, her mother-in-law sees her, and, and she sees her with, with a, a container of barley, or a container of, she, her mother and we would know it's a container of whatever they were harvesting, so barley or wheat, whatever field she was in, so she sees that Ruth has a big container, and then she, Ruth brings that, hit, brings that to her into the city, and Naomi sees it, and Naomi and Ruth discuss uh, the day, and, and again, Ruth was up early in the morning, stayed there late in the evening, doing the work in the field of gleaning, and uh, Naomi learns that Ruth was in the field of Boaz. And then Bo and Naomi reveals to Ruth that Boaz is a kinsman. A kinsman is, is, is somebody that's in the family, someone that's close by, someone that's kin. 
They're close. Related. Related. There you go. Thank you. Someone is related to them. And uh, in Naomi says, don't go anyplace else. Stay with Boaz. Stay with Boaz. And so that's what she does. She stays fast. She stays close to the young men. She stays near the maidens. And she, she works in the field of Boaz until it's the end of barley harvest, until it's the end of wheat harvest. And... Um, so who are, who are the maidens exactly? They were working for Boaz. The maidens, yes, they were. They would be women. Uh, I would think young younger women, um, perhaps um, younger meaning women, women who weren't be married as of yet. That may not be always true in every instance, but I would think they would be under fourteen, perhaps. Um, I mean, I'm not sure how young they would get, but they they would be younger younger women. He would be working in the field with doing other other tasks that would not be as labor intensive. Uh, they, they they could be I'm not sure what they if they would be cutting or if they would be bundling what they would be doing or if they would just be making sure preparing the meals. I mean the meals preparation in that time this time period took a little bit longer. Everything had to be fresh. Everything was from scratch basically. So. Uh, you can, you can you can get there wasn't anything that was instant anything that was canned and anything that was and sort of preserved in any way for long periods of time. I'm sure they had ways of preserving some things for for short periods of time, but they 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 may have been also involved in meal preparation and light light labor. That's what I would say. And who, what the maidens did and who they were. But I mean, when it says that she was kept fast by them, mm -hmm. it, it seems like they're in the field. Yes, it does. It does, it does seem that way. I mean, so, so they're gleaning, and he's he's got his own maidens gleaning, ones that were working for him? Yes. I mean, there's young men there, too. I mean, aside from people that might glean in the field. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Were they yeah, to these, clean these are... on the corners, in the corners of the field? I'm trying to remember what it said. In the... I don't think they're supposed to clean the corners, but... um, Or harvest the corners, or whatever they're supposed to be. No, I'm saying... People who are poor oh, yes, that I were see. coming yeah. to the land were mm -hmm. they supposed to go yeah, to the, the corners? corners. That's right, the corners. Is that why it was? It was would have been, you know, like why is Ruth, why is Ruth right here, you know, yes, it's true. beside these right. reapers? Mm -hmm. Yes, and she should be over somewhere far away from yes. where the actual harvesting mm -hmm. is being done. Right. So she actually got to be closer. She got was granted that permission to be closer to, the, to, to where the actual process was taking place. She just sort of, she sort of beat out her barley. She sort of had to work to get her ephah of of pure, pure wheat, pure barley. Any any th more more thoughts you have? Questions? Caroline, how about you? No. Nothing. Okay. So let's summarize. What sort of some things that even either either in this chapter. Or in the previous chapter, we uh, we have we've discovered about this book of Ruth. Want to uh, name something, Caroline? Just that how they're doing with the harvesting the barley and the wheat. Okay, right. That's right. Tammy, how about you? Um, well, Ruth is. I don't know if she happened on. Well, it did say that she happened, didn't it? Yes, it did. Light yeah. happened on Boaz's field, mm -hmm. but we know he didn't, she didn't just happen on it. I mean, she didn't plan on it herself, right. mm -hmm. but God yes. certainly mm -hmm. planned it. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and that's she right. Uh, she went and um, was there and at this next of kin's, and he's been he's been very comforting and encouraging to her, and uh, she's. Uh, Appreciated all his help and um, allowing her to, to gather food mm -hmm. yes. uh, because he knew the situation apparently right. and mm -hmm. what was going on. Yes, that's right. That's right. All right. So next week we'll be back. We'll begin chapter three of the book of Ruth. We're halfway through the book, and there's more more interesting things to come. More things that are going to be um, seen. Uh, the kinsman meeting the kinsman redeemer, the one that's the closest one, and then we also are going to see 
eventually. Boaz taking the responsibility of, of marrying a marrying Ruth. And she seems like a very a lady with her head on her shoulders, a lady who's um, wanted to be help and not a hindrance. So um, we'll learn more about her next week, more about Boaz. The character of these people in the book of Ruth are it's very, very distinct, very distinctive characters they are. And uh, Naomi, Boaz, Ruth, and then later on at the end of the book of Ruth, we have genealogies. All the people that are related, to that, well, not all, but the, the, key, the key people that are related to Ruth. And because, because of the marriage of Ruth and Boaz, all her, 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 her descendants. And we also we see the, her, 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 the ancestors, the people that came before her, both she and, and Boaz. We see those, too. How everybody in, in the genealogy is a key, is a key, key individual. Particularly in the Messianic line. Because we'll see that Ruth is in the Messianic line. Both Ruth, and this, this again is getting slightly ahead of ourselves, but Ruth and Boaz, they are in the Messianic line. Messianic line. You know, the, the great, great, great grandson of Ruth was the second king of Israel. When you think of that, the second king of Israel. And we, when we have, and I think I believe it's the mother of Boaz. I think it's the believe it's the mother of Boaz, who was there at Jericho. There's only a woman, only only inhabitant of Jericho, to survive. That says it wrong, Tammy. Mm. The mother, the grandmother. It wasn't the only person okay. to survive. I should, okay, but what I mean, household. I should use the word people group. The household. household and it was group. because of her faith. Because of her faith, yes. It's not. She. I, I didn't mean to say. She, I, I knew she wasn't the only one. I was trying to try to indicate that I was thinking more of the household, the people I'm group. Sorry. No, it's okay. You clarified it. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you clarified it. It's good. If you need to clarify something, please clarify it. That's that's good. <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's important that it's important that we get these things clarified. So yes, the people group, the household, the household of of Rahab was spared because of her faith, and she is the she Boaz is is right in her line, and then we have Boaz being near kinsman redeemer to Ruth, and and we have we have. Um, well, her son is Boaz. Son is Boaz. The son is Boaz. Yes, thank you. And then we have Ruth and Boaz, Mary. They have they, they give birth to a young man named Obed. Obed gives gives well, Obed doesn't give birth. Obed <laughs> Obed his wife have a son named uh, Obed and Obed uh, Obed and his wife have a have a son named Jesse and Jesse and his wife eventually have a son named David. Uh, and so, um, and then we know we know what the Messianic line of David. That's where Messiah comes from, is David. But I'll be we have a woman of faith, Rahab, giving birth to a son of character, Boaz, who marries a woman, a, strange, a woman from a strange land, of Moab, and plays the part of a kinsman and redeemer, which is which is a, which is a picture of of what Christ has done for us when he when he became flesh for us. So. These are what this is what's coming up later on in the um, in the book of Ruth. So let's um, let's pray. We'll close in prayer and we'll see everyone next week, Lord willing. Father, thank you for the afternoon. Thank you that you have showed us in the book of Ruth that thou dost care for us. That thou has made a plan that we will be redeemed. Please allow us to continue to see uh, many details from this book that thou would have us see. Things that would be an encouragement to us. Thank you that you have established the woman of faith, Rahab, who gave birth to the son of character. Allow us to be Christians who have faith, Christians who have character, that we're willing to believe what you say and do what you say. In Jesus' name, amen.